Good morning, everyone. Our meditation this morning is based on readings from Daniel 8 and Revelation 10. These are apocalyptic writings, prophets, prophecies, possibly augurs of doom, and whatever they are, to the unlearned in biblical scholarship like me, they are inscrutable, beyond inscrutable. For that reason, I hope you will enjoy this morning spending quite a lot of time in deep silence. The thoughts, thoughts that occurred to me around the readings were about the, the need for a balance between living in the world and living inside ourselves. We have to live in the world. The world and all its beauties and all its uglinesses have to be part of our experience, even on the spiritual journey. Otherwise, why would we be here? But the inner journey, which relates to the outer journey, is of course the most significant. And I think these contrasts come out in the readings. There are, in the Old Testament reading, descriptions about the rise and fall of civilizations. I read one interpretation which said that the horns represent the different historical movements, the rise of the Medes and Persians, the overcoming of the Medes by the Persians, the fall of the Persians to Greece, and then the subsequent rise and fall If you've gone on to mute. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> so I was saying that the worldly reading of Daniel 8 is a prophecy about the rise of fall and fall of different civilizations until the end of time. 
and Revelation 10 echoes that, but in a way which I'll say more about later. On the inner level, my sense was that what is being described are the various ups and downs of our spiritual journey as we struggle to balance outer and inner without ever knowing where it's all leading and having to trust. So let's begin by carrying this beautiful silence a little deeper. With five breaths, using Thich Nhat Hanh's practice of saying inwardly, I am breathing in, I am breathing out. Five long, slow, conscious breaths. And now some balancing breaths, closing the right nostril, breathing in through the left, closing the left nostril, breathing out through the right, then reversing the process, breathing in through the right and out through the left, and then releasing the nostrils and breathing in and out through both nostrils, and we'll do that three times.
And now let us take into some minutes of contemplation that beautiful line which seems perfect for an apocalyptic vision from the poem that Tim read to us earlier. God is all mystery and we love him for that. God is all mystery and we love her for that.
Now as we come to Revelation 10, we have perhaps some still mysterious indication of the meaning of all the prophecies. First, we have a magnificent description of an angel of the Lord standing with a foot on land and a foot in the sea, perhaps to symbolize the whole of the earth, a rainbow over his head, a face like the sun. For me, this is perhaps reminiscent of the angel who will shortly appear to Mary in the time of Advent and the anticipation of what is coming to be. And the voice from whom Daniel's prophecies come speaks to John and tells him to look in the hand of the angel. And he does so and he sees there a little scroll. And the voice tells him he's to take this little scroll and eat it. And he's told that it will taste as sweet as honey in his mouth, but it will cause bitterness in his stomach. What are we to make of this? For me, it is the revelation of the message of Jesus, the message that we shall love one another, and that it is through love that we shall come to the purpose for which we have lived upon the earth. It is to taste the mystery of divine love. And the reason that it is bittersweet is that there is an enormous struggle involved as we envisage a love that is beyond the compassing of our minds and as we recognize against that the pettinesses and greed of our ego. So I would ask you now to envisage a well, perhaps the well where Jesus met the woman from Samaria and I would suggest that you send your bucket down and down and down and down 
until you reach the living waters, the goal of life.
O thou, the maker, molder, and builder of the universe, build with thine own hands our temple for thy divine message of love, harmony, and beauty. Amen.